What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the ASRock Desk Mini 310. Now ASRock was kind enough to send this my way for review. And before I completely get started with this video, I do want to get this out of the way. I am fully aware of the A300 that's upcoming from ASRock. That unit will support the AMD Ryzen APUs like the 2200G and the 2400G. I will have a full review on that as soon as it's released. But for now, I have the 310. We're going to take a look at this. So what we have here is an ultra small bare bones mini PC kit. This is basically an STX motherboard shoved inside of this case here. It uses the H310 chipset, so it does support Intel 8th generation 65 watt desktop processors, and with a BIOS update, it does support 9th also. Just to give you an idea of the size, I've compared it to an i7 Bean Canyon Intel NUC and a Raspberry Pi 3B+. As you can see, the desktop is still very small. It's not as small as these NUCs, but it does come in a little cheaper. So around back, we do have our power input. This will be powered by a 19 volt power supply, display port, HDMI, VGA, one USB 3.0, one USB 2.0, and gigabit ethernet. They also include an adapter so you could add two extra USB 2.0s on the top or the side, depending on how you have the unit displayed. But personally, I won't be adding this in this build. On the front of the kit, we have one more full-size USB 3.0, USB Type-C, we also have audio out, and microphone in, plus our power button, and there's a small LED there that shines blue when the unit's powered up. Like I mentioned, this is a bare-bones kit, so you will have to add your own CPU, RAM, and storage, and it will support up to the i7-8700, not the K version, because the K version, I believe, is 95 watts, but the 65-watt version will work in here, and it'll make an awesome little workstation with that i7. But for the price, I opted for the 8th generation i3-8100. Now, this is a quad-core CPU, 3.6 gigahertz, with built-in UHD 630 graphics. As for RAM, I went with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM. This will support up to 32 gigabytes at 2666, but I found a really good deal on these two 4 gig sticks, so I'm going to go with this. And finally, storage. Now this will support an M.2 SSD, but I opted to go with a 2.5 inch SSD from Silicon Power. This is a 256 gigabyte unit. The price on the Desk Mini 310 does vary a little bit from site to site, but on Newegg and Amazon right now it's 165, but I have seen it a lot actually on sale on Newegg and Amazon for $135. So we're going to go with the 165 here, bringing the total cost to $363. Now you could bring the total cost on this way down if you didn't opt for an i3 and went with a Pentium G4900. Now that's a dual core CPU with a UHD 610 in it, so it's less powerful than the i3, but it's $61 cheaper. But even at $363, this is cheaper than the Intel Nux that put out this kind of power we're going to get from this unit here. So it's really up to you. If you're looking for a super small form factor, you will have to pay a premium. So inside of the box, obviously, we get the desk mini, we get an install CD, all the hardware we need. We also have our SATA adapters, serial port adapter, and the two USB 2.0 port adapter if you want to use it. And all of this will be powered by a 19 volt 6.32 amp adapter. ASRock also sent over their mounting kit, which I won't be using, and they also sent over their M.2 Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo. Assembly is very straightforward. You could do this in 10 minutes. I'm just going to be using the Stockbox Intel cooler that came with the CPU. I'll also be using the thermal paste that came pre-applied on the CPU cooler. I could switch this out later if I really wanted to. Go ahead and throw the RAM in. Like I mentioned, this is only 8 gigabytes. It will support up to 32 if you're interested in that. The unit will support two 2.5 inch SSDs or mechanical drives. I'm just going to be utilizing one slot here and one adapter with this SSD. You could also add that M.2 SSD up top, but I'm going to be saving that for another video. I'm not going to be putting an SSD in there, but if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you probably already know what I'm thinking about doing with this thing. And here's the finished product. Now you could lay this horizontally. It does come with rubber feet. It only comes with one set, so you kind of got to decide if you want it horizontal or vertically. Personally, I like the vertical look, so I'm probably going to leave it like this, but for now I haven't even installed the feet. Now it's time to get into testing. Remember, this is a bare bones kit, so it really depends on the CPU you choose. You could have better performance than me if you went with an i5 or an i7, 
I went with the i3, so we're going to see what this 8100 will do. I'm going to test out a bunch of stuff here, like 4K video playback. I'll test out Blender. I'm going to run some benchmarks. We'll do some PC gaming and some emulation. All right, so here we are. I'm running Windows 10 Pro. Got all the drivers updated. As you can see, we have that i3-8100 at 3.6 gigahertz. This is a quad-core CPU. 8 gigabytes of DDR4, 2400 megahertz RAM. The board does support 2666. I'm just using 24 in here. And for the GPU, we have that built-in Intel UHD 630. First thing I'm going to do is show off a couple benchmarks that I ran. We have Geekbench here, single core 4710, multi core 14,273. Love seeing these single cores at around 5,000. It's getting real close. There's no way to overclock this CPU, so we're kind of stuck here. But I think 4710 is pretty decent. Next up, we have Cinebench R15. The best score I was able to pull out of this was a 568. All the rest were around 555. Remember, this is a quad-core CPU. We don't have any extra threads here, but if we did, like let's say four cores with eight threads, the score would be much higher. But I think I can live with a 568 here. I also installed 3 d Mark and ran a couple benchmarks here. This is CloudGate 1.1. We scored a 9048, which isn't bad for built-in Intel graphics. Night Raid 1.0, 5,947. And finally, Time Spy. I just did this because it was sitting there. Scored a 472. I'm surprised the whole unit even finished up. But we're faster than 1% of all other users who've run this benchmark. If you're not familiar with 3D Mark, Time Spy is the benchmark you go to with a high-end gaming PC. It's definitely not designed to run on built-in Intel graphics, so that's why we scored so low. I always get asked to test Blender, so I figured I'd go ahead and throw it in this video. To give you an idea, the last PC I did a video on was a Ryzen 5 2600, 6 cores, 12 threads at 3.4 GHz, but the CPU does boost to 3.9 GHz. It rendered this BMW scene out all on CPU in 1 minute 35 seconds. And on this quad core i3-8100, we just rendered the scene out in 3 minutes and 10 seconds. So lower is definitely better. The Ryzen 2600 definitely has this beat, but it has more cores, more threads, with a higher boost. Next up, some 4K video playback using Kodi. This is a 4K MP4 at 60 FPS. This is my go-to test, Big Buck Bunny. No trouble here, and I really didn't expect it to have any trouble with 4K video playback. It's super smooth here, playing it natively, so if you want to stream from Hulu, Netflix, or even YouTube in 4K, as long as your internet can handle it, this PC will be fine doing 4K video. I did want to test one more here. This is the Jellyfish test at 400 megabits per second. This is 4K UHD HEVC 10 bit 60 FPS. It's running really smooth, but I'm having trouble finishing it. Not sure if it was the file or Cody doing it, but either way, that's a super high bit rate for 4K video playback, and the average person will never use something like that. Moving over to some PC gaming, this is Apex Legends, all low settings, 720p. I didn't mess around with the adaptive uh, resolution scale, but we're averaging 35 FPS with a minimum of 26, and that was jumping out. It really bogs the whole system down. Other than that, it actually runs pretty well. I was surprised that it ran this well. I know we're at 720p. It's not the optimal resolution to run this game at, but in a pinch, you could play Apex Legends at 30 FPS on this setup. Rocket League 1080p, I'm using the performance settings in the video option. We're averaging 77 FPS, so there are some things we could turn up to make it look a little better, but it's fully playable at 1080p on this system. CSGO 1080p, medium settings, we're having no issues here, we got an average of 89 FPS, this is a very well optimized game running on the Source engine, so I expected it to run good. You could bump this up to high and run it at 60. I had to throw this in, this is GTA 5 720p, normal settings. I'm actually impressed that it's running this well. Now this is an older game and it's very well optimized, but to see this running at an average of 36 FPS on built-in Intel graphics, it's pretty awesome.
And finally, for PC gaming, we have Doom. This is 720p, low settings. I do have the rendering resolution set to 90%. We're averaging 40, 42 FPS. Definitely playable at 720p on this system. And finally, some emulation testing. This is the Dolphin Emulator, running Melee, 1080p. I also tested a few other games like Mario Sunshine and Wind Waker. All running fine at 1080p if we go up to 1440. Some games will work, but I'd leave it at around 1080. Here's some Dreamcast emulation using the ReDream emulator. We got Dead or Alive 2 running at 1080p. It's actually 1920 by 1220 also tested Sonic Adventure 2 and Revolt. Shouldn't have any trouble with the ReDream emulator doing Dreamcast. PSP using PPSSPP. This is at 3x resolution. Killzone Liberation. Also tested God of War and Ratchet and Clank. If it's running God of War and Killzone at full speed, you shouldn't have any trouble with any PSP game as long as it's compatible with the PPSSPP emulator. Here we have some PS2 emulation using PC SX2 1.5. All the games that I tested are at native resolution. If I go up to 720p or any higher, it just kills performance and everything. But as you can see, Tekken 5 is running at full speed. Ratchet and Clank, up your arsenal. Again, native resolution, running real smooth. And finally, Shadow of the Colossus, native resolution using the DX11 backend. If we take a look at the GPU usage up in the top left hand corner, we're getting real close to 100%. So there is a good possibility that when you reach certain parts in the game, it's just going to drop off. You won't be running at full speed. Like we have a little dip here down to 56. So when you encounter your first Colossus, it will probably drop down to around 45, 50 FPS. I was still pretty impressed here because usually on lower end systems when I turn back to look at the cathedral or whatever you want to call it back there, it just drops off. And here, we're getting a nice 60 FPS in the wide open, but there's still a chance it's going to dip down in certain areas. So overall, the Desk Mini 310 is an awesome little machine. I mean, it's really going to come down to what CPU you pair with this unit, but it's a pretty cool little device. Now, as for sound, I didn't hear it whatsoever until I started gaming, and even then it wasn't as loud as an Intel NUC. I've been wanting to get my hands on one of these for a little while. I do a lot of mini PC reviews on this channel, so it definitely fits right in. If you're interested in picking something like this up, I'm going to leave links to Amazon and Newegg in the description. I'm also going to leave a link to ASRock's website so you can find the full description on this. They have all the specs, all the driver downloads, and BIOSes. If there's anything else you want to see running or have any questions about the Desk Mini 310, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try my hardest to get back to you. I'm going to install Linux on here and get RetroPie up and running, but this thing would be perfect for an arcade build. Just running Windows on it with LaunchBox or Big Box. It'll definitely handle MAME games no problem at all, and lower-end emulators. I kind of wanted to throw out the higher-end stuff that'll run on a chip like this. And as for SimU, that's just going to be a no-go on something like this. RPCS3 or Xenia It's just not going to run on the integrated Intel graphics. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button and maybe subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with things like this. Like I mentioned, as soon as the A300 Desk Mini is released, I will have a full review on the channel. Like always, thanks for watching.